Um, so hopefully all of you are here for the EMS mentoring program. Is this true? Yes? Okay. Great. Well, it is great to have you here. Um, I'm going to just talk a little bit about how mentoring fits into the overall picture of, of the ways that we try to support students in EMS. And then Karen Morosi, our new Director of Student Engagement, is going to talk more specifically about that part, about how you can really help with the uh, beyond the classroom kinds of experiences um, with your with your protégés. Okay. So I want to start with just a couple of quotes from some really interesting studies recently, um, and they kind of highlight why mentoring matters. So a Gallup poll of 3,000 graduates was done to see if they were engaged in their work and thriving in terms of overall well-being, which is kind of a different standard than we often use. Not just are they employed, but are they engaged in their work and really thriving in terms of overall well-being. And the finding was that how you went through college was really important. So the kinds of things that you did beyond the classroom were important in addition to, of course, having good classroom experiences, too. And one thing they highlighted was that feeling supported and having deep learning experiences during college meant everything when it came to long-term outcomes after college. So not just <coughs> while you're here are those things important, but for your overall well-being down the road, doing those things now is really important. And it went on to say, unfortunately, only two in 10 students receive a key element of that support role in college, having a mentor. So you are some of the lucky ones. And another article in Inside Higher Ed went on to say, if your college or university wants to get serious about finding mentors for its students, it could start by looking at its own alumni base. Assuming your institution has been around for 10 years, we have that more than covered. Uh, your alumni are one of the greatest human capital assets it has. And that is truly how we feel in EMS, that um, having our gems board and having alumni who are willing to come to totems and do things like mentoring is really valuable for our students. So we really appreciate the time that you put into these activities. And hopefully, you get a lot back from it as well. So when I think about where mentoring fits, I kind of want to start with just what ideally you know, would define an EMS graduate. And there's kind of three different things that we think about when we're talking about this. And one is having demonstrated expertise in their discipline. So that's what you get in your department, taking all of your classes and your major, becoming a real expert in your field. Knowing how to apply that expertise for impact in the world, that's often what you get sometimes in the classroom, but often you get that outside of the classroom in internships and research and other kinds of experiences. And then understanding what it means to be a good global citizen. In other words, having um, ethical reasoning, knowing the, the importance of giving back to your community, these types of things. And everything that we do as a college really is designed to facilitate student success in these areas. Um, I thought it might be fun to just look at how these play out in our, our stated learning objectives for different programs. So I took all of our programs <coughs> and put them, made a word cloud out of the objectives. And so there were, they, you can kind of pick and choose what you're going to highlight, but I think it's interesting that one thing that I find is applying knowledge and understanding for impact on global problems, which kind of goes with the other, um, those stated ideals for our graduates. We really want them to be able to do this when they leave, to go out and, and then we want you to have impact in the world. And another one that stands out is being able to communicate. And so that's another aspect that we really try to facilitate um, 
in EMS and have graduates who can talk about their science and talk about why they had certain experiences. And that's certainly a place that mentors can really help as well. So a lot of these ideals are kind of wrapped up in the MSAGE program, um, the EMS Academy of Global Experience. This is the Laureate Globe um, that students receive upon earning Laureate status, which used to be right at graduation. Um, but we are changing that up to be a little bit different this year. And I'll get to that in just a second. The components of MSAGE are trying to capture those three different areas that we think are important. So signs of academic excellence, engaged scholarship, so these activities beyond the classroom, and service activities. And this year, instead of only becoming a laureate right at graduation and really having nothing structured in terms of MSAGE before that, um, we've added these different tiers, and we're really excited about this. Um, we think it'll be, hopefully, a more meaningful experience to try to eventually um, attain laureate status. So, we have a protege tier um, for students with at least 12 Penn State credits, but maybe little engagement experience. We have a practitioner tier with, again, 12 PSU credits, and roughly half the experiences needed to be a laureate, which typically has been around nine experiences across the three categories. And then laureates. And, and instead of having to do that right when you graduate, you can now do that when you're within 36 credits of graduation. So kind of any time, you know, senior year. And the idea is that we used to have laureates and they left. Literally that day they graduated and left. So no one ever really saw a laureate around the college. But now we'll get to have laureates who are there for the whole year and can serve as mentors for the practitioners and protégés. And to become a laureate, you need, in addition to being within 36 credits, you need a 3.0 GPA, a sufficient number of accomplishments, and a well-written essay that ties it all together, um, which goes to that communication piece again. So when we kind of think about how we try to support students across their whole time with us, um, you know, when you first came, we tried to do new student orientation, and probably some of you went to totems um, to try to help you kind of really become part of the EMS community right from the start. And after that, you know, we really want to support these different aspects of what we ideally think our graduates should have. So starting with academics, in the Ryan Center we try to support first year seminars, and, as well as the two calculus classes, and all of the math tutoring, to really try to help get a solid foundation. But after that, there are a lot of things that just continue throughout your whole time with us. Um, so professional development workshops and tutoring, Instruction in science communication and also writing tutoring. That is going on the whole time. Advising and engagement plan conversations. And also all of the engagement activities that, that we directly support at the college level. And so when we think about this, where does mentoring fit in there? Um, mentoring, oh, sorry. And hopefully these will help you on this path from M-Stage Protégé to M-Stage Laureate. <coughs> Mentoring fits in with this other constellation of things that are going on to help a student be successful over this entire path. And all of this is done in collaboration with departments who have a lot of engagement activities, uh, educational equity, alumni serving as mentors and in other ways and lots of other entities across the university as well. So that's kind of how I think about where mentoring fits in. It's part of this, of this group of activities that are all kind of there to support student success. And they each have sort of a different role. So I want to go through that just briefly. So to kind of give a better idea of what, you know, what falls under the mentor role and, and what probably is better in other places. 
how do we best all work together? So the advising team is really strong on the curriculum, on degree requirements, um, policy, university policies, and helping students figure out their academic interests. The writer in residence programs really work on communication skills and professional development activities. The director of student engagement works on discovering and planning opportunities beyond the classroom. And mentors really can um, help guide students toward a lot of these resources. You'll hear a lot more about student engagement in a minute. Department faculty are great for career advice for our course choices within the major, they're the subject matter experts, so that's where students are getting their, that deep disciplinary knowledge, and for our research as well. And then there are university resources that are also can be important. <coughs> Tutoring for upper level courses, the student engagement network we're very strongly tied in with, provides a lot of engagement opportunities. CAPS is sometimes very useful, our, our counseling center, and um, career services as well. So this kind of building from the Ryan Student Center outward to departments, the university, and then as an equally important part here um, are, is the alumni piece, building out even, even farther. Um, and here, you're so valuable for sharing real life experiences, Connections, helping students connect to opportunities that you might know about that we don't. Networking, um, career and engagement advice. And probably talking about trends that you see in your fields too. These are really valuable to pass on to your protégés. So I would encourage you in your conversations with your protégés to sort of think about all these different things that we're that we're trying to achieve, and how you can um, both give direct advice sometimes to your protege, but also help guide them towards some of the other resources that also make up this, this kind of constellation of support around each student. So I will end there, and I will let Karen Morasi take over, talking more specifically about the student engagement piece. I'm loud enough I could probably handle this room, but I'll, I'll use the mic anyway. So thank you for letting me be here today to talk to you a little bit more about engagement. And so I want to give you kind of a very brief, deep dive into the work we're doing right now with this new piece that Yvette talked about, this idea of engagement planning. So a lot of the words that she had in that constellation of support for students that you saw might have kind of seemed familiar. There's this word advising. People kind of know what that is professional development, help with communication. I think those are familiar words that lots of people know, but we're doing some new work, and I am very much continuing some of the amazing work that's been going on in the college, so I can't take a whole lot of credit for this and being here for three months. But the idea of what is this idea of engagement planning and designing your Penn State? So I'm gonna give you, especially for the mentors, what are we talking about with students here to kind of add to your toolkit when you're talking to students and talking to your protégés, your, you know, your mentoring protégés, not to confuse it with the end stage protégés. And so I'm going to give you a very quick, brief, uh, deep dive. It's awesome that this program is being recorded and the slides will also be provided. So it's, this is going to seem a little overwhelming. Don't, don't get overwhelmed. This is going to be cool. So quickly, some terminology. I think one thing that we struggle with even now in higher education is what is engagement. Um, if you do the search, or you do a Google search on engagement, you're going to get a lot of articles that deal with engagement in the classroom. How can faculty engage students? And so this is an interesting term that is used in lots of different ways. So I'm going to set some groundwork here. The idea here is the things you do outside of the classroom, beyond the academic degree and the earning of that academic degree, and it points directly to what 
Yvette was saying those last two bullets, being able to apply your knowledge and being a good global citizen. So that's really kind of what we're talking about. In the best practice, these are often with faculty. In the best practice, these are often related to an academic affinity. And so this is kind of the things that we're talking about here. Sometimes you might hear the words engaged scholarship. I also think a big piece of the work I want to do, especially early on, is really coming to help students understand why. We, are, you know, we make a lot of assumptions about what students know and, I, and where students come from. And I think especially in work of mentoring is stepping back from those assumptions about what the students' experiences have been, what they have done before, even what they may have done at Penn State, because you might be talking to what you think is a University Park junior, but that student might have come from a Commonwealth campus. And they're in a very different set of needs than somebody who's maybe been here since their first year. And so again, always stepping back from those ideas. So I think the why question is huge. What is going to convince a student to use their precious time and money, potentially, to do these things? So what is it about it? And I think not, not in glossing over that question. Why is this important to you? And also being effective and efficient in the decision making. There isn't a lot of time or money for fumbling around for some students. And so helping really plan those ideas. And so some of the things I say is a chance to bring your major to life. Try it out. See if you actually like it. What does it mean to do this in, the re in real practice? That's often very important and the idea of gaining skills that you can't get in the classroom. The classroom provides many good skills. We're creating independent learners, and that's awesome, but these idea of the, what's gonna help you kind of getting out of here with leadership, perhaps, and bringing forth some different skills. And then also the one that I keep harping on with students, they hear me say this all the time, it will never be so easy. It will never be so easy to meet people that are different than you. It will never be so easy to try something new. Now is your chance, please don't waste it. So I talk a lot about that. And then there are so many other resources where mentors are a huge resource here, and if I touched on that, I'm gonna go a little bit more into that. So kind of the why and what about engagement is the first thing. Not glossing over, you should be engaged, that's enough. It's not enough. For a first generation college student, it would never be enough. They don't have time, or perhaps they don't realize they should have time. And thinking about that. So we're talking about engagement plans. When I'm working with students lately, this is what I'm asking them to do. I am asking them to tell me what they're going to do semester by semester and in the summers with their Penn State experience. Depending on who you're talking to, that could feel super overwhelming. I do this with first years lately. I've been going into the first year seminars, and the eyes are big, and they're feeling very overwhelmed, and they just failed a test. And I'm going to walk in and say, hey, let's talk about engagement. Let's talk about that. So it can feel you know, this big, overwhelming task of what are you going to do with your Penn State time? So we're going to, we've been working on providing some frameworks. But this is, you know, kind of like, how did you fill this in? You know, and the idea is, with, is intentionality. It's actually not about the answer. It's about the process. So we're working on teaching students a process, this idea that how are you going to move forward, and how are you going to use what you're learning as you go along about, not just in the classroom, but the experiences you're having. Because if I wrote down this answer as a first-year student, I would have been a structural engineer, and I would have been building bridges right now. I didn't do those things. I did a whole different set of things. So it's not, it's not what you write down that's mattering right now, it's, it's the process. So let's talk about what the process looks like. <coughs> so we're teaching them to design. This is a rough design process. How would you design your life? And we are drawing heavily, this is at the university level and in the college, drawing heavily from a book called Designing Your Life, How to you, you Live a Well-Filled, Joyful Life. So it's like, these are two Stanford faculty. And it's a design process. And we talk about things like, what are your motivators? Where it's, you know, let's, it's okay to say, I'm curious about this. This is what I want. The intrinsic motivation is a big part of designing. Like, if you want to, what do you want to get out of Penn State? Talk about what's in your heart, what's burning in you, because that's going to be one of the best drivers. The idea of biased action, this idea of prototyping, try something. Don't, it doesn't matter if it works. Go try something, because every time you try something, you learn. And every time you learn, you can go forward from there. So part of it is getting people to start saying, what is the right thing for me to do? There's no right. There's no right thing. You're going to try it, you're going to decide how you feel about it, and then you're going to move forward. This idea of bias to actions. People get so hung up on saying, what if I got to do the right thing? No, you don't. You've got to do something. See how it goes. See what it teaches you. Move forward from there. Reframing. Sometimes people get hung up in the questions, and they can't see that. And so the idea, how would someone else see the question? 
How could I propose this to myself in a different way? And that's another great tool when you're trying to think about a big question, or like, like what am I going to do with my four years here? No, it's a process. So this is something for all of us. You never stop designing. You never stop designing where you're going next. You never stop learning. And you know, talking to students now, not only are you going to design your Penn State, but then you're going to start thinking about what your career steps are. This idea, it's a process. There's no right path. There's no one answer. You're always going to be designing your way forward. And the idea of radical collaboration. Who's your squad? Who's the knowledgeable people in your life who's going to help you with making decisions and choosing? So if we're going back to efficiencies and design constraints, we need to talk about the fact that there's time and money are one of those constraints. Who's going to help you make good decisions? Who's going to help you know what to do? And that's where mentors are huge. These two areas, especially the reframing, someone gets stuck in a question, you can frame it a different way. Somebody needs an idea, like what should I do? That's where your suggestions are key. So you're a part of our design process already in terms of helping students design their Penn State experience. So looking at that as a design process, we have to change the questions. So what is it that you're actually doing? And so these are some of the things we're talking about with students as we do the engagement planning is the idea of stop getting away from what is your passion? Like it has to be a big thing, you have to know. Right now, today, let's talk about what you're curious about. What's making you excited right now, today? Follow that light right now. It's gonna lead you somewhere else. It's gonna lead you to the next step. So change the question, reframe the question. And then also, instead of saying, what are you gonna do with that degree in geography? What problem do you want to solve? Because all the problems, the really good, hard problems of our world, are not solved with people from one degree. It will never happen that way. So it's getting students to stop thinking about, I need a degree in this, as opposed to what problem do I want to chase? So we bring that out in the engagement planning. And the other, so then the other frameworks, we talk to students about, so what problem do you want to solve? What do you want to do? That's still a big question. Like, what do I want to do? And if I had to fill in every semester, how would I attack that issue? So this is one of the other frameworks that we're talking about at Penn State that might also be a tool for you as you're working with students. Like, I don't know what to do. There's 46,000 students here. There's so many clubs and organizations. How do I pick? How do I choose? How do I move forward? And so this is drawing from the work that's being done by the Student Engagement Network at Penn State, is there are these five growth areas. They talk about the growth areas as, you know, how is it a student could develop or should develop in the time they're here, and this is the beyond the classroom stuff. How, you know, what are those areas? And so they look like this. There's multicultural awareness, which is beyond respect for other people and just living nicely with others, but really getting into the aspects of diverse perspectives on subjects, how systemic problem, privilege and um, race and gender exhibit themselves in systems and how you break it. So getting, that's a part of being a learned individual. And some of those, those are some of those aspects you get from outside the classroom. It starts with first year students in world and conversation. Another one is professional development. And again, you guys are such good partners here. What can we, I do to help me learn how to be a professional in this field? What are those things I can do? Give me ideas. What can I do here to help me develop here? Systems thinking. For those of you who are maybe in more technical fields, this is easy. And for some students who are earning engineering degrees, this might be something they do in the classroom, actually, a whole lot. But it's not necessarily clear in different types of majors or different courses of study how you'd look at a system. And I, oh, you know, the example I'm using right now with students all the time is uh, systems, like right now, my biggest interesting system is Penn State. There is no other higher education institution in the country like this one, and it's fascinating in all its parts and all its complexities. Ethical reasoning is another one. How many examples can we pull in our current world about what's going on with ethical reasoning. So this is, again, a growth area for folks as they're coming out of the university to wrestle with and, get and grow in skills beyond the classroom. And then also the idea of civic responsibility. So how are you a good member of your community? How do you contribute to community? How do you take your expertise to make the world better? Be a good global citizen. Again, go right back to those college-level goals. And so when students are wondering what should I do? Can you help me? Here are the frameworks that we're putting out there. So I wanted mentors especially, and students to see this. These are frameworks. These are ideas for you. What, I, what suggestions do we have on what problem should I solve? Here's, a, here's like a great set of problems. These are the UN Sustainable Development Goals. If you have a student that's kind of 
floundering perhaps, I mean, I don't really know, like, what do I want to do? If you need a place to send somebody, this is a place where the college has been pointing students. These goals are important. These are the ones that are critical needs to our world. Behind every goal, there are benchmarks. The UN wants to meet these benchmarks by 2030. And there are you know, distinct things, problems, behind every goal. So this is a wonderful place to, to you know, help provide suggestions and look at these on your own. I think they're fascinating. I, I can see myself, I contribute to two of these every day. I definitely work on things like gender equality, and I definitely work on things like quality education. So I even see myself in these goals and how I fit in that pattern. So this is again a Penn State graphic. So this goes back to prototyping. So I just want to know if you're, when you're working with students, it's about the process. What have you done? What did you learn? What do you think your next step should be? Did you try that? Did you like it? Did you not like it? And helping students see that everything, every step takes them to another decision and then another point in their journey moving forward. And so sometimes that's all, you know, just realizing that we're really trying to talk about a process. We're trying to talk about this, like a this is an intentional design. Instead of having students kind of fumble into things, let's encourage students to find their way. And each step takes you to a new decision point and you launch forward from there. You, you, you build your way forward. Instead of kind of, I have to come up with a plan and follow my plan. No, you're actually going to be strongly influenced by everything you do and moving along. And then if you need to think of things to do, we've got all kinds of great growth areas for you. So that's a little bit on what those plans are looking like right now. And so it's been a wonderful experience trying to do I'm doing this in the first year. I've been doing this with the Anastasia Scholars. Um, it's fun. It's interesting. It's overwhelming. Um, but again, I think sharing the language is super important. So people are kind of talking to students in the same way. It helps build those cultures for us. It's very, that does the college a huge service to help continuing to build that culture, but it also brings that consistency so students are kind of hearing that same message and then being able to use those tools in, in moving forward. So. Thank you for your time today. I appreciate being here, and I'm delighted to be a part of the college and happy to you know, talk to anybody about the work we're doing or any ways you want to be involved in that as well. So at this point, we are asked to have you work with your, uh, your mentoring protege, so find your matches with your alumni pair. And the idea now is to you have a goal sheet, I believe, that you want to be working on with your student. So I think we have some time here before 5.30 set aside to find a spot. You can stay in this room. You can step out into another space in the building. I think there are some other rooms that are also available for the the hope right now is that mentors and students would get together, spend some time together, and start working on some of the goals that they would want to develop for this year in terms of moving forward as a mentoring pair. And again, I just want to thank the, the mentors and for giving their time to this program. Um, it's just really appreciated by the college.